Uh, thank you so much for extending an invitation out to me and my team. Uh, today, I'll be talking about the roadmap for Salesforce for Outlook. Before diving into details about what we are bringing to market in Spring 15, uh, I'll go over a quick overview of the capabilities for Salesforce for Outlook. Excellent. So we know that the world of a sales cloud user is divided between spending time in Salesforce as well as reading emails in Outlook, managing their calendars in, in Outlook. Sales cloud users are collecting contact information. They keep that information up to date. They also complete tasks to drive their opportunities to closure and get those deals under their belt. Um, they also read a lot of emails. There's a lot of communication happening between sales cloud users and their clients, most likely in Outlook, um, as well as managing their calendar so that they can meet with uh, prospects and clients. So they are spending a lot of time in two applications, basically. The business solution that Salesforce for Outlook brings uh, is an integration between those two applications. And it does so using two modules, two components that are completely independent from one another. The first one is a synchronization engine that will bring your contacts from Salesforce into Outlook or the other way around. If you're using Outlook to manage your contact information, you can bring that information and share that information with the rest of your organization in Salesforce. It synchronizes tasks and it also synchronizes calendar events. Synchronization means that whether you're looking at your calendar in Outlook or in the Salesforce app, your calendar looks the same so that your coworkers can book appointments when you're available, whether they do that in Outlook or in Salesforce. The second component that Salesforce for Outlook brings is the side panel experience directly in the Outlook application. On the left-hand side here, I am showing an Outlook 2013 version with the Salesforce for Outlook plugin installed. It will bring on the right-hand side that side panel experience where you get to see Salesforce details about the person emailing you in Outlook. With the side panel, I can save important emails into Salesforce. On the right-hand side, you see how that very same email looks like in Salesforce. The other capability that the side panel brings is the ability to relate an email and to relate an appointment to other Salesforce records, such as accounts that the appointment or the email is related to, or opportunities that they are related to. Directly in the side panel, while being in Outlook, you also get the ability to create new Salesforce records. So you technically never have to leave your Outlook application. You can create new events, you can create new opportunities, you can create a case when you get an email from a client of yours that is reporting a question or a problem. Uh, you can stay very productive in Outlook. So now let me talk to you guys about what we're bringing to market in Spring 15. We've been working on four new major features. The first one is to synchronize recurring tasks, one direction, from Salesforce to Outlook. The second one is around um, the records that we're displaying in the site panel and how we are using the email addresses to match against Salesforce contacts and needs. The third one is about how emails uh, get added to person accounts. And the last one is around adding an email to multiple Salesforce accounts or opportunities or cases and so on. So let me dive into details about those features. Mm -hmm. We are synchronizing recurring tasks from Salesforce to Outlook. A recurring task is a task that you do on a regular basis. Maybe you have sales uh, meetings every week with the rest of your team and you have to complete a task for that. Maybe you are meeting on a quarterly basis with some of your customers. So it is important that not only your standalone tasks are synchronizing, but also your recurring tasks. The second feature, and this is the feature that I'll demo later today, uh, is around displaying contact information in the side panel, 
um, based on the email address that your clients are using to contact you. Um, I'll dive into more details, but in a nutshell, if multiple email addresses um, exist on your contacts, we're going to search for all those email addresses so that the site panel becomes more intelligent and the likelihood of displaying the right contact in the site panel is increased. So it helps sales users see the right information at the right time. Very impressive. The third one is an administrative capability. Um, this is to help drive consistency. So a person account in Salesforce is both a contact and an account. And we want to make sure that when you relate an email to a person account, for those organizations that are using person accounts, that this association is done consistently so that the rest of the Salesforce deployment can rely on that association to be done uh, consistently across all Sales Cloud users for your organization. And the last major feature is around relating an email to multiple accounts, multiple opportunities, multiple records that accept tasks. Right now, we have the ability to relate an email to multiple contacts, mm -hmm. uh, but not multiple accounts. So if you're interested in that feature, contact support will look into um, the state of your organization and will turn on that feature based on your request. Um, so you can associate an email to multiple records, such as accounts and opportunities. What's um, important to note about that feature is that Every single time you relate that Outlook email to a Salesforce account will create a different email in Salesforce representing that association. Hmm. So instead of having one task in Salesforce with multiple association to accounts, you'll have multiple uh, tasks in Salesforce, each task with one association to an account, one association to an opportunity, okay. and so on. So with that, uh, I'll switch over to, to my demo. Um, I'll demo how the site panel is surfacing contact information using uh, email addresses. I'm in the Salesforce application at the moment on the Contacts tab. Let me go into the details for this contact, Steve. My administrator uh, made an other email field available for me so that if I know that Steve Diamond has several email addresses, I can populate those. In this case, the out-of-the-box email field um, has been populated with Steve Diamond's corporate email address. Mm -hmm. And then Steve has an alternate email address um, that is populated here as well. When Steve sends me an email uh, from his corporate email address or from his alternate email address, the side panel will be able to retrieve Steve's details. So we're looking up the Salesforce contacts table using here this email address, and we're capable of bringing back Steve's information. So whether your clients are contacting you from their personal email address, from their corporate email address, from whatever email address they have, will display uh, their information here. Great. Is there is there any sort of limitation to how many email addresses Salesforce is able to recognize on a single uh, on a single contact record? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So no, there is no limitation. Uh, that's a feature that does not need to be enabled. Uh, that will be a, a default behavior. Wow, that's incredible. So if I had a contact with six email records on that, Salesforce would be able to recognize all of them as being pertinent to that account or to that contact, I should say. Yes, that is correct, Mike. And, and this is a behavior that is available on contacts as well as leads. Wow. That's, that's very impressive. Very cool. OK, great. Um, so before I jump into Roadmap, I would like to give you guys a few pointers, a few resources that are available out there if you want to use Salesforce for Outlook, or if you're currently using Salesforce for Outlook and want to educate yourself more about its capabilities. So I invite you to Google for um, and search for a few keywords here. Uh, we have release notes that are specific to Salesforce for Outlook. So go ahead and take a look at those. They will list all the features and all the fixes that we're providing um, so that you understand what, what features um, those different versions of Salesforce for Outlook have. Uh, the second one is around system requirements. Uh, I invite you to make sure that your environment is complying with the system requirements. Uh, and also, there is a group, Sam, 
uh, that we have made available so that you guys can talk to one another. I am uh, obviously monitoring the group and responding whenever I can, but this is really a place for you to share your experience with other customers so that you understand um, how they have deployed Salesforce for Outlook and the type of benefits that they get from uh, using Salesforce for Outlook. Um, for your users as well as for your personal education, there is also a quick start guide. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look at the URL there. It's case sensitive. Uh, it will have a two, three minute video that goes over the um, functionality, so very helpful. So with that, I'll uh, jump into the, the roadmap here, and I'll start my roadmap um, section of this presentation with uh, a model um, describing all the integration that we have in place today. On top here, I'm representing the sales cloud um, as well as the Outlook application. What we have today with Salesforce for Outlook is the synchronization engine to make sure that your calendar and your contact information looks the same between Salesforce and Outlook, as well as that side panel experience in Outlook. Outlook is an application that connects to the Exchange server where email information, contact information, and calendar information are stored. The Exchange server is catering to other clients other email applica applications such as Outlook Web App from the Office 365 offering, as well as your mobile devices, uh, other email applications on your Windows machine, on your Mac machines. So when you're looking at your, at your corporate calendar on your iPhone, you're actually connecting to the Exchange server. So when it comes to making sure that your Salesforce calendar shows up on all those devices and all those applications, we have the Exchange Sync capabilities that will bring Salesforce with the Exchange server so that you do not need the Salesforce for Outlook synchronization engine anymore and more devices uh, get connected between Exchange and Salesforce. What we're also bringing to market in Spring 15 is an experience in the Outlook web app through this new Salesforce app for Outlook that will be available in the Microsoft Office Store in March. Eventually, if you are on a path to upgrade to Exchange 2013 as well as Outlook Web App or Outlook 2013, you have a cloud-based solution that will cater more devices, including Mac machines, your uh, iPhones and your Andro Android mobile devices, as well as an experience in the Outlook web app. A few details about the Salesforce app for Outlook. It will be an open beta in Spring 15, similarly to how e Exchange Sync will be. Mm -hmm. um, it is only for those customers using Outlook web app. Outlook web app is part of Office 365, it is also available on users using Outlook 2013 on Exchange 2013. It can be used in conjunction with Exchange Sync, so that app is not offering any type of sync capabilities. It is only surfacing Salesforce information in your Outlook web app. For synchronization purposes, you would use Exchange Sync. Uh, and finally, we're working on providing email saving capabilities We'll start development in summer 15 and release the feature in an upcoming release. Excellent. Great. So what? So I know that we we just discussed you know this, the Salesforce app for Outlook in addition to the core Salesforce for Outlook application. You know what does this the the new Salesforce app for Outlook mean for people who are currently deploying or have already deployed the Salesforce for Outlook tool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're currently using Salesforce for Outlook. Um, this is a, a great place to be. The capabilities of the Salesforce app for Outlook will eventually get there, but obviously since this is the first iteration we're releasing, it is not as mature. Um, so Salesforce for Outlook provides email saving capabilities, provides the ability to create new Salesforce records. Um, we will eventually provide those capabilities in the app, uh, but in Spring 15, it, it is basically surfacing Salesforce information. I would, be, I would actually be happy to show you that experience uh, if you have a few more minutes. 
Um, so I'll switch back here to my uh, laptop and I'll show you how the Salesforce app for Outlook shows in Outlook Web App. Um, so I'm using the browser version of the Outlook Web App and I'm reading my emails here. As I scroll through my emails, I see that there is a tab here letting me uh, access Salesforce information. So when I get an email from Phil, including Julia, Rosa, and um, Ashton, I can see that the app is displaying all types of information about those people. I can also see the accounts that they uh, belong to and the opportunities that they play a role in. So this is the Salesforce app for Outlook. Um, Salesforce for Outlook um, is an add-in that gets deployed in Outlook. Mm -hmm. It is very rich. Uh, it has a lot of features. Uh, so this is um, definitely a, a place where you want to be, where you want to stay. We'll continue developing Salesforce app for Outlook for many, many years to come. Absolutely, but I mean, just from the brief glimpse that you showed us, it looks like we're moving towards a better user interface and just a much richer experience with being able to access Salesforce information within your Outlook app. That's right. Excellent. Well, I think there's a lot for our users to be excited about there, because as we mentioned before, for any organization that lives and dies by their, by their Outlook, this should be an incredible help for you. But in order to better gauge what our customers think of things, let's find out what they're asking. Hey, Sam, what's trending? Well, what's trending is they're, they're loving a lot of these changes. But the most trending question is, what about Mac users? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this mm -hmm. is a, a good question. Um, Salesforce for Outlook does not work in Outlook for Mac because it is an add-in that you have to install and Outlook for Mac does not support add-ins. Uh, the difference with the Salesforce app for Outlook is that it will cater more devices, uh -huh. more operating systems, uh, including Outlook for Mac. Uh, so this is good news for Mac users. So we're heading in the, 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 there's a light at the end of the tunnel for our Mac users. Exactly, and we've been listening yeah. to, to you guys for a while now, so we realize that uh, the Mac community users is, is big. Yeah.